Okay. Um, can you? Yeah, we can uh, see that. You can see that. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Um, now, before I start, actually, let me just just put a link into the chat. So these slides, if you're interested, are available on the website that I just put into the chat there, and um, the R Markdown source as well, if you're interested. Uh, okay. Uh, so whilst this talk is about um, making using a, a custom R package to facilitate teaching, um, in a sense, that's a pretext to just discuss matters of teaching R, teaching statistics through R in psychology departments more generally. Uh, like some of the issues that we were facing um, that made us think about using uh, an R package um, and even the objections to using an R package, they're really about general issues about teaching R, um, or teaching statistics and research methods using R. So it's sort of a, a, um, a general talk then about just um, this, this, this general topic that this whole seminar is about. Um, OK, so just um, uh, some of our the, the background, just some relevant background. Um, uh, we we've been teaching uh, advanced modules um, in uh, NTU psychology for over 10 years, the advanced statistics modules at undergraduate and postgraduate level. Um, we've been teaching them through R for over 10 years. But uh, in starting in uh, the academic year 2019, 2020, we made the big bang of switching everything over uh, to um, teaching with R from teaching with SPSS, so in all the statistics modules and research methods modules at undergraduate level. Now, this was a, um, a making the decision to make that move to to make this move from SPSS was a departmental level debate that went on for at least two years. And um, at, at points it was um, it, it, it was kind of tense and acrimonious. Um, uh, but it, it, my point here is that it was not taken lightly. It was not taken kind of unilaterally just by a, a small number of um, fanatics like me. Um, it was it was a departmental decision that it was debated uh, at length, and and then it was decided it was the best thing to do. So we made that transition then, starting in in 2019, and um, and uh, and I should say as well that our department is very large. Um, it may actually be the largest psychology department in the UK if it's not exactly exactly the largest, it's certainly one of the largest. So uh, so we were going to be facing challenges then when teaching statistics through R, um, when we move to the undergraduate modules, so it would be very, were very, would be very different to, or different to the ones that we had encountered when we were teaching these advanced modules. That was really plain sailing for the last ten years or so. These optional modules, uh, where where students um, are already kind of confident and interested in statistics, very different situations would arise then when we're dealing with uh, first year undergraduates uh, with cohort sizes of over a thousand students. OK, so in 2019, 2020, we started teaching it to the first year students in statistics and research methods modules. And uh, actually, I forgot to start my clock to keep myself on time. Silly me. Uh, I'll start it now. <laughs> um, uh, uh, and so that was over 1000 students um, in that in that year. Now, in this in the academic year just gone, we have gone on to teach our second year students. And so we're teaching about 2000 or so. Uh, we are rather in the last academic year, we taught around 2000 or so uh, undergraduates, um, all their statistics and research methods modules through through R. And in the next academic year, we'll continue teaching our first and second years and then all project supervision um, uh, for quantitative data analysis will be done using R. And that means then that there will be about 2500 students who will be using R, undergraduate students, I mean, who will be using R. There'll be all the first year and second year students for their statistics and research methods modules. And then there'll be all the students who are doing d uh, quantitative data analysis in their third year project, which, by the way, is not n near 100 percent. It's more like, say, 75 percent, maybe 80 percent of, of students and the rest of them do uh, qualitative analysis. OK, so the initial motivation then for uh, using an R package was, uh, let me just <laughs> roll back there. Uh, the initial motivation for for using an R package, a custom R package, was that 
when we t when we teach our first year students or what we want to teach our first year students in their first few weeks is data visualization and data exploration and a number of people have uh, today have talked about the importance of these topics and i couldn't agree more they're extremely important um, and, and and a great way of introducing statistics generally and things that students find much less intimidating than the inferential statistics um, which which have got these these quite challenging uh, technical and mathematical concepts and so just looking at data thinking about it data students find that much less intimidating so teaching exploratory data analysis data visualization in those early stages when they're being introduced to statistics i think that's a, a really good way to go but what was happening then was that in our literally the second workshop that students were doing in the first workshop, they were just introduced to R, how R works, how to install it and so on. In their second workshop, they were doing writing code like what we see here. They were being asked to write code like what we see here. So this one, uh, so for, for people who are used to using R, these are very familiar. This is, these are very familiar lines of code. Um, but for a student who um, comes in, knowing nothing um, about R or coding and all the other things that uh, Rob was actually just talking about in his, his talk there about them them being in fact not digital natives at all um, this was just black magic um, so uh, they were they were copying and pasting this code they were not reading it it was it was um, something that was in fact difficult for us to explain in the time that we had to explain it and it was it was was um, counterproductive. It meant that instead of getting them to just get visualizations uh, easily and just think about those visualizations, they were struggling with the code. They were copying and pasting code, and they weren't even copying and pasting it, you know, fully. And it was breaking, and it was, it was, it was just, it was, it, it went wrong. Um, and so, generally, what happened then was that. It, uh, the students, many students seem to come to the conclusion that R is opaque and uh, and inscrutable. It's just something that, you know, it's, it's just this, this black magic incantations um, is impossible to understand. You just copy and paste it in and you hope for the best. And that then was, uh, if you compare what was happening then to what had been happening in the years gone by when we were using SPSS, it didn't look like we were making any progress at all in terms of teaching quality. In other words, students were blind, going from blindly uh, clicking um, GUIs to blindly copying and pasting. And again, there was there, there that, that that was that was not our our intention. So our objective then was to replace all these opaque lines of code, these code blocks, with custom functions um, that would do exactly what we wanted them to do. So in other words, a, co a, a function that would do what ggplot is doing here, which is a histogram and, and, and you know, the scatter plots we want them to do and the box plots and so on, and the summary statistics and things like that. So that was the idea, replacing opaque blocks of code with functions that are easier to explain, easier to understand, et cetera. Okay, now and we immediately got arguments against this, which I think were entirely reasonable. If, if I wasn't proposing this move to using an R custom R package, I would have been raising these arguments myself. So the arguments more or less went, uh, were, 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 there was various various arguments, but the, but the main points were were these related points here. So the first point is that, by using these functions and custom packets, students aren't learning these powerful tools like dplyr and ggplot and tidyr and so on. They're learning um, just uh, a, a, a limited repertoire of tools uh, in comparison to the the, the vast, uh, wonderful set of tools provided by, for example, the tidyverse and things like that. And then other arguments were things like, well, if they're using a custom function instead of you know some lines of code, well, then they're not learning about those 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 steps that those lines of codes are doing, uh, and they're 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 not really understanding. They're just having a function and and something comes in, something goes out, and they don't understand the steps involved in, um, in, in going from that input into the function to what the uh, function produces. And then students would become dependent on another package um, if they um, 
if they use this. So in other words, they come out of 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 their undergraduate and they're dependent on a, 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 this package and um, and so kind of relying on, on on the longevity of that package. Now, just those the second argument there, which is, uh, you know, that, that a custom function in place of code, um, it, it means that they won't learn the steps involved, etc. That's actually an argument against all R packages ultimately about all functions in R ultimately. So in other words, like the steps involved in doing a t-test, if you just use the basic base R um, functions like mean and standard deviation and just the arithmetic provided by the R language, you'll be able to do um, a, a t-test in just a few lines of code and 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 arguably you'd learn more doing that than using t.test uh, so so in the argue so the, the argument then that second argument is actually an argument against all R packages all custom code and arguably even an argument against all higher level languages like R you could say well you know if you did this in C++ you would learn a lot more uh, you would have you be forced to learn a, a lot more um, and then the third argument is ultimately an argument against all R packages as well. So saying that a student will become dependent on a package is like saying, well, if you're using dplyr now, well, what if, you know, Hadley Wickham decides he's, you know, going to get a, a another career and he's not going to continue developing that and, and and other people don't. And you'll have to use find another way of, of doing data wrangling in the future. And so you've created a dependency. And that, of course, is true, but it's, but it's like a general point against all our packages. But the first point, I think, is the most important one. And it's saying, uh, which was uh, um, that, you know, by using these custom functions, they're not learning uh, dplyr tidy R, ggplot, and so on. And those are extremely important tools, and I couldn't agree more. Now, whilst they are extremely important, and I believe in them as much as anyone, um, uh, the question, and it's really a question, it's not something that I have a, I, I, I can definitively answer, know the answer to. The question is, do we have the resources to teach those um, tools properly. Can we, especially in the core modules in the first and second year, teach our students a level of confidence um, competence in a ggplot, dplyr, um, and data wrangling generally? And, and I think that we can do a lot more than we're doing. I, uh, having said that, I still think in those first few weeks, uh, arguably the first half of the first year, we shouldn't be introducing these these tools. In other words, we should be keeping that gradient more uh, shallow. So in other words, by our second week, they're not hit by this brick wall um, of complexity. It's it's a slow gradient of, of learning. So even if we are going to teach, try to teach the full you know, breadth of, of tools, data wrangling, data visualization tools, um, we do not have to do that in our first, the first half of our first year. And but yet we definitely want to teach exploratory data analysis and data visualization in that first half. So we have got a kind of an argument for using this package anyway, even if even if we are going to be teaching the full the uh, as much as we can of, of these um, these general purpose tools. I should say, by the way, we do teach those advanced tools in those advanced mod in the advanced modules. So there is that. But I think the, the question is more about like what happens with the core modules that all students take. OK, so the the package itself, I really am not trying. I, 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 I don't want to make it sound like this is a really well developed package. It is it is in its infancy. So beta uh, at best beta, more like alpha. And it was really just a kind of a, a an experiment to see how, how it worked last year. Now, I, I do hope we're, we're going to continue developing it over the years and that it will become a, a, a much bigger package. But at the moment, it's very. Um, minimal. Um, so what it has is has some methods for data, vis data visualization, some methods for data exploration, some helper functions uh, for some of the statistical analysis, just some. And, um, and so it's there up in GitHub, and I'll talk more about that at the end. And then there's this uh, package down based page for it as well there. And so uh, we can go, I'll talk more about that at the, at the end. So it's version 0.0.2. OK, so here are just a few. I'll just go through some of the things we can do with it. So here's a scatter plot, and this is just uh, you know a function that implements some ggplot code. And so that's your basic scatter plot. 
there is your scatter plot where you're grouping by, you know, you're coloring one one categorical variable. So that's the uh, what by is doing there. So in, in previously inside the AES inside of ggplot, you would have color is equal to that categorical variable. So that's being replaced there by by, and then you have you know your scatter plot colored with your line of best fit. Um, so that uh, code there, um, producing that plot there, the original ggplot for that is that there. Now, we could simplify that code a bit, but uh, not much. Um, so so you would have a lot more to explain, a lot more to teach, um, teaching that than that, that scatter plot function. That scatter plot function is just simpler, it's easier to explain, easier to understand, um, uh, uh, but of course nowhere near as general uh, as ggplot. But all these, you know, this is a multi-line command obviously, and um, when we've got these kind of things like AES aesthetic, you have to explain what that is, and then there's all sorts of possibilities for coding errors there and it's just so much easier to use that upper that that uh, first one there um, now similarly then for some descriptive statistics and um, and again you know this this here this, this function called describe that's basically an interface to a uh, dplyr summarize and group by right and so there we're, we're just doing some descriptive statistics of some variables that are grouped by some categorical variables. And this one here is an example, this one called describe across. This is an interface now to summarize and across that, that relatively new function dplyr and then also a pivot wider. So it's replacing quite a bit of code there, uh, which would be um, quite difficult to explain and to un understand. Then some statistics helper functions. These are just like some examples. We've got this Shapiro hero test here and um, um, and that one liner there would be replacing this this block of code here now you could simplify that a bit but not by much so you get the idea it's like trying to uh, it's it, it's it's trying to create a, a relatively lightweight wrapper for these more general tools and uh, and, um, and and so doing minimizing the amount of code that they were writing um, so some other advantages then, so the primary ob objective, as I said, was just to replace opaque code with um, easier to understand, more transparent code, e um, easier to teach, easier to explain, easier to learn. But some other advantages to using a custom R package would be uh, with, with distrib distribution of data. So it is an important skill for students to learn how to download data and read it into R using the like read underscore CSV and things like that. But they don't have to do that for every single data set. And so there will be a lot of data sets that you want to use over the course of many years and having them in a package uh, can be just, you know, a convenience. And then uh, custom help pages uh, including custom help pages for data. So if you're downloading it, uh, if you're reading in data from a CSV file, you don't have this nice help page which tells you what all the variables mean, but you would have that in an R package. And so that's very advantageous. And then the help pages for all your functions can be an a useful way of explaining more about the sort of the background about, um, you know, whatever data visualization and summarization and the statistical analysis and so on. Much more important than the help pages, even though I love them, um, are vignettes so you can you, you can use these vignettes then as uh, a, a essentially like a, a, a kind of a, a textbook um, uh, that you kind of create on the fly as, as you're teaching so so we've got there uh, uh, if you follow that link there you'll see some vignettes on how to do data visualization how to do exploratory data analysis and so on and they'll be using these functions and there's a lot you can do with that Okay, and I'm uh, actually near the end. I'm not sure if I'm under time or over time. My, I started my clock clock late, uh, but let me just end with a, just a practical issue that we didn't um, anticipate. So initially, we had no urgency in getting this up on CRAN. We just said we'll just use uh, GitHub, and and that'll be more than sufficient, right? Um, so the pr the reason for that primarily was because uh, getting something up to GitHub. Um, is so easy in comparison to getting something onto CRAN. I mean, there's there's a much more steps involved in getting a package onto CRAN, and also then uh, CRAN 
um, the maintainers of CRAN do not appreciate very rapid updates. So, so they, as I understand it, and I think this is from Hadley Wickham's book, so it must be true. You can, they don't want you updating your packages uh, more than every three months or so. Now, what we were hoping to do was to be updating this package on almost a weekly basis. And so we said, okay, great, put it up onto, onto GitHub. They install from GitHub using DevTools, and, and that's wonderful. We've solved all our problems, no headaches, uh, dealing with CRAN, and then uh, easy uh, up updates, uh, rapid updates. Uh, but that turned out to be a, 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 a complete, a, an experiment that failed. Um, the um, hundreds of students in, in, their, in these workshops met, met this GitHub uh, API rate limit. So where the number of um, hits to any given repository is limited. Um, and, uh, and so trying to, when there's dozens of students trying to install from the same repository at the same time, they're basically uh, t temporarily suspend, uh, limited from doing that until, until uh, you know, the maximum occupancy rate declines. And so we were having students who couldn't install these packages at all dur during the workshops. And of course, if we were requesting them to update on a, on a regular basis every, every few weeks, we would be just encountering this problem ag again and again. So we, so we didn't, um, so we, we stopped, we stopped requiring them to update regularly. Um, and, and, and in fact, that was a real problem because, well, because, well, all, all this development that we were planning to do on a kind of a regular basis over the year, uh, we couldn't do. So in other words, we, when we were preparing new materials, um, which we were kind of doing on the fly, uh, we couldn't put them into that R package um, and get them out to students um, immediately. It wasn't going to be uh, possible to do that for, for that for that reason, which was a real problem. Didn't anticipate that, but uh, that's just something to, to everybody to be aware of. And then the second thing about installed GitHub is that by default GitHub, when you we use DevTools install GitHub, it tries to update all the dependencies to their latest package, not to the minimal required package, but to the latest package. No big deal. It doesn't force this upon you. Um, it just requests or rather uh, asks its default is to ask, but a lot of students were saying yes to updating the dependencies and they were hitting then this notorious, um, you know, do you want to install from source because there's no binaries available and they were saying yes to that, uh, even though they didn't have compilers and and then they were being asked to create, you download R tools or Xcode, and they didn't need to do that, and it was a mess. It, so, so again, just something that I would much rather avoid. Something that won't happen with CRAN because it would just require get, get the re minimal required packages. Okay, so I think that that's, I've got, I think I've gone over. I'm not exactly sure, but um, I think it's that's that's me done. Thank you very much, Mark. That was great. Uh, really interesting to hear that approach. Um, do we have any questions for, for Mark before I jump in with one? I'm aware that I'm, I keep jumping in with one to start with, so I'll let other people have a... Okay, Tom, so there's a question about how easy it would be to search the vignettes that Mark created. I don't know if you want to address that, Mark. Uh, search search them. Um, I, I, I'm not sure I, I fully understand the, the question, but let me, let me just uh, bring up the package down uh page there oh no not that um let me try that again sorry let me try that again <laughs> sorry <Ugh>. okay sorry <laughs> um so where where am i okay so I, so we go to the this is the uh, I'm assuming you're looking at my web page here so so the um, the vignettes are all in there in in on the um, package down page and and then searching I'm not sure exactly what you mean um, by searching they're, they're they're just web pages so you 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 would just search them like you would search through them like you would search through everything uh, is, was that exactly the question
no, thanks. I mean, I think that gives an illustration of what's what's you know the first thing that's under the hood. So appreciate that. Yeah, no problem, no problem. Um, okay. Rob, do you want to ask your question? Yeah, thanks, Tom. Um, I, I mentioned the provision of um, simplified functions um, for for doing critical things, and I, I understand you know the motivation for it completely. Um, but I guess what I was thinking about was the um, whether you've got like kind of a planned trans transition out of simplified functions into you know here's the full sure. you know capability. Yeah, yeah. So Are to you be calibrate? honest, to be honest we don't have that plan that's not to say that we're not planning to do that uh, but we don't have we, we're still debating at the moment there's sort of a, an ongoing debate about just how much we can teach to in our core modules so we've got these advanced modules and things are much much easier with them so we can keep on kind of loading on um, um, topics there because the students um, will do a lot of work themselves with the core modules we're, we're, we're taking a more um, cautious approach so we don't yet have a plan personally I would like to um, have it so that by their in their second year they're learning the generality of data wrangling tools um, and, and ggplot. I would that that's what I would like. But at the moment, what we will be doing, um, um, despite what I just said there, we will be using these in our second year, in the next academic year as well. So so hopefully, um, as 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 things stabilize, as the curriculum stabilizes, and we get, develop more materials, particularly, and get get we get more confident in what we can and cannot teach, kind of easily and efficiently, we will be able to to do that. But I, I, I do think that's the best way to go, that uh, that they do get taught general data wrangling tools. I mean, and you, you were talking, Rob, you were talking about it in your talk about how, how important these are. Emily was talking about them, uh, you know, these, these general tools. I couldn't agree more. I, I, I just couldn't agree more. I'm a complete um, believer in that. And it's just a matter then of the practical matter of, of how we're going to do that. And um, and it's just the way we were originally doing it was just not working. It was backfiring where it was going. It was basically the, the proverbial throw them in the deep end and, and, and see how many of them learn to swim and you know a lot of them won't a lot of them won't and and there, there'll be there'll be a lot of tears yeah i think thank you very much for that answer i think there are two i guess there are two concerns out of this calibration and the scaling or what i think of as calibration which is how much when when by and and then whether you can do it by scale and i think well i guess you know you, you can sort of yeah, another way you could do it is by keeping the the exercises like it's very very simple and just you know lots of repetition very very sort of very simple and then just sort of expanding that kind yeah. of sphere of of yeah. action and sort of introducing things but i i, I really sympathize with the approach you've taken i sort of understand why you did it because I, I think you're because what we're saying perhaps is that the, the coding details are kind of secondary to the ability to do these things and yeah. to focus on visualization and focus yeah. on Right. Yeah, exactly. So what what we wanted them to do in their early weeks, for example, was just to look at a box plot and think about a box plot and so on. And we we that wasn't happening because they were getting stuck in the weeds. And so that was that was a real problem. But just a kind of another point about this just general issue is that I specifically made these functions to be a kind of a, 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 a relatively lightweight wrapper to the ggplot and dplyr functions. So in other words, the they're not completely different types of functions. They're just convenience functions wrapped around these these more powerful tools. So what we, in principle, can do then is to say, look, you 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 remember the scatter plot function. You remember the the Tukey box plot function. All that is doing is writing this much more general code. And so, um, if you want to do much more flexible things. This is the this is the thing to 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 learn. So it's not like saying you you learned one thing uh, and 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 you shouldn't use that anymore and you should use something else. It's more like a transition where it was like a, a kind of a, a gentle introduction and then going more deep in. So it it'll be more of a seamless transition it, it, because of the way it was it was written than it it, it might otherwise be. 
Yeah, I noticed that the, the code has got sort of in the style of the sort of the, the, the syntactic style of, and I think that that's really yeah. important. Yeah, that was that was that that was kind of like a something that was kind of always um, kind of on, yeah. on my mind, just trying to keeping it, keeping the, uh, the 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 grammar of it in a sense um, the same. Mark, did you look ahead to like where students need to be for say projects in in you know in their final year and say, okay, we need this wrapper function to have enough flexibility to cope with. 80% of the projects that we encounter in that year. Yeah, yeah. So, well, that's that's a very good question. So, uh, when it comes to uh, the statistical analyses uh, that students will be doing, uh, where um, a, a vast majority of them will be do using relatively general tools like uh, um, LM and um, and maybe GLM and 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 ANOVA and so on. Uh, so uh, and 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 many of those things, many of those topics, we didn't even need helper functions because the the LM itself was was already very very easy to use. Um, so so. I think we're we're happy about uh, the the teaching of the statistical analyses themselves for their research projects, but the real th problem uh, that they uh, that they will face, and and as many people have pointed out, is that they will be and it was Emily who said this. They just just they will get this shock when they get their own data and they won't know how to wrangle it. Now we we do teach them a certain amount of wrangling, but but it's it's in a more constrained um, context, and so we 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 can and should be doing more just to prepare them for that, so that they will be able to get their data from Gorilla and 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 Qualtrics and so on, and get it into a format, and then do that analysis, which which they will have no problem with. That analysis they'll have no problem with, but it's getting to that stage. So to be honest, we haven't yet got all of this um, as worked out as as we want it to be but but we'll get there great thank you very much mark it's really interesting to, to hear all that um so i'm going to suggest um for my benefit but also for others i'm sure that we have a very short comfort break and uh we come back at 10 past four sorry if that pushes this on the discussion on a little bit further into the early evening for people but we're going to have a general discussion where we're going to invite all the speakers to um, to to come together and talk about the various things that um, we've been discussing. John and I in the background have been putting together a few sort of points that we think are really salient here, and I hope we can get a bit of a discussion going. And people are very welcome to chip in on the chat with additional things. Um, so we'll start that at ten past four, just to give everyone a little bit of a break to get a drink and and use the bathroom and uh, and. Okay, we'll see you back here at 10 past 4 for that. Great.